Welcome to the No Guilt Fangirls Podcast, where liking what you like is never a bad thing. Here's your host and head fangirl in charge, Patty Holiday. Hey, y'all. I'm your host and head fangirl in charge, Patty Holiday. Welcome to the No Guilt Fangirls Podcast. Now, today I have a special interview. This is with two executive producers from Madagascar A Little Wild. We had a chance to sit down and talk to Johanna Stein and Dana Starfield, um, both of which were generous with their time and with their answers. And, uh, well, they let me fangirl them just a little bit. Uh, so you know how I can be. Now, this was a fun interview, and I hope you'll take a listen and enjoy it. And more importantly, I also hope you will take a chance on this new show. It comes to Hulu on September 7th. It's called Madagascar A Little Wild. It brings back all of our favorite friends from the Madagascar movie series and my nine-year-old daughter Lucy, who some of you guys have listened to her interviewing um, before on this podcast. She absolutely loves this show. It's geared more for the pre-k kids but she's nine and she was thoroughly engaged enjoyed it wanted more and you guys know what hulu is going to do us a favor they're going to drop this down with six episodes to binge all at once on september 7th Uh, so you're going to want to make sure that you take some time to check that one out all right enjoy the conversation that we had with uh, johanna and dana and uh definitely go go watch this one it's It's a lot of fun and super, super kid-friendly and totally safe for kids because you know how important that is to me uh, to throw that out there. Hi, Patty. Hello. Hi, ladies. How are you? No guilt life. Nice. How are you doing? I'm hanging in there. Um, (laughs) I have to tell you guys real quickly, thank you so much for, for meeting with us and making me look really good. I have a nine-year-old, and when I told her that I was interviewing two executive producers who were women of the show that she watched with me last night, she geeked out. So, oh, I love that. You're, yeah. you're changing lives over here, and you're making me look good, and I appreciate right. that. Um, <laughs> but my question that. for you is, uh, when we were watching this together, she loved it, and immediately when we finished it, you know, wanted to watch the next one, the next one, the next one. And I just had that moment where I was like, this is something that I think kids are really going to, like, it's a keeper. It's something kids are going to remember. So thinking to the future, in 10 years, what do you want kids who are watching the show now to remember from, from this experience, from what you guys have put together? That's the, that's such a good question. Um, I, well, to, to me, um, I love this. I love working on the show and I, 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 it's very, it's really fun. The stories are really interesting. I love the characters, but I, um, what gets me and what sometimes honestly chokes me up is the heart of the show. And I'll have seen an episode. I can't tell you how many times by the time we get to the end of it, of, of, of the, you know, pipeline of an episode, it's the, it's the relationships between the characters, the love that they have for each other, the friendship, and the fact that they deal with these issues as, you know, as, as friends and as a team, I think is really powerful. And I feel like, you know, especially now in this world we're living in, with so many challenges that none of us could have anticipated, um, it's such a, it, it, it warms my heart, so many aspects of it. And I would hope that in 10 years that a, a kid remembers that, that the show um, was like just a just a, be- a lovely b- balm, B A L M, is that how you say that? <laughs> uh, for their soul, because that's what when I'm watching it for the 900th time, I get that feeling like, oh my god, I'm so I just feel so heartwarmed by it. So that's what I that's what I would hope. Yeah, I, I agree with Joanna. We put uh, you know a ton of heart, and the whole production put so much heart into this show and into the stories. Um, and one thing that we've referenced a few times is, uh, you know, so many kids grow up uh, 
remembering like Mr. Rogers and the first time they saw like some memorable episode about, you know, something that affected their lives. And something that we've tried to do is to infuse our episodes with these issues that are very real and, and feel very real to children um, and kind of touch on them in a way that, that we hope is, is something maybe they haven't quite seen before. Um, and might be able to just exactly what you're saying, you know, 10 years from now saying, oh, I remember when I saw that specific episode. Um, so we're hopeful for that. Thanks, Ivy. Thank you. Thank you so much. Tell your, tell your daughter, hi. Oh. <laughs> uh, so I have a question about your creative process. At what point, what's your favorite, like, Mm, that's my favorite part of this whole thing. And we just nailed it. Like, you know, you know that feeling you get? What, what part is that for you and your creative process? I, I got, I mean, for me, uh, Dana knows I'm going to, I've said this before. For me, the, the candy is collaboration. Cause I, I've been a, I've been a writer. I've written by myself and that's great. <laughs> Tough as you know, I'm sure. Uh, uh, and it's a great, you know, it's wonderful to be able to express. But for me, the collaborative nature of animation mm -hmm. that you, I, I, none of us, not one person on this crew could do, could make this show without the rest of us. There's something that is so energizing about, about bouncing ideas, you know, about giving somebody an idea, having them bat it around, throwing it back to you. When, or, as Dana was saying, when we see a script in, a, in an animatic storyboard, it, uh, it's, it's incredible because somebody has just plussed our idea and made it better or a joke and made it better. But, and we have a lot of opportunities throughout our process to work together. There are very, you know, there are a few moments along the, this process where you're working by yourself, you're writing or you're designing or you're storyboarding that, but there's a lot of collaboration in all of our departments. And to me, I just, it's so, you know, it, it, it I, I love it. That's awesome. Dana, do you have a, a specific? Yeah, well, I mean, I would say one, I, I would start us specifically, I would say our um, happy hour outline breaks are probably my favorite. <laughs> part of the yes. And then, um, yeah, I was, would say the, you know, the cool thing about animation is it's almost, you know, you see movies and TV shows where kids have like a stuffed animal that they bring to life. And how incredible is that? And like, we get to bring our stuffed animals to life. We get to bring our ideas to life and getting to see that um, and getting to see the team, you know, present to us, you know, these ideas that started off as a spark and then we get to sit down and see what they have turned this into is like, oh my gosh, my, my, my stuffy just started talking. My, my, this little thing in my brain now lives in the outside world. And that is a really cool part of the process. Yeah. Uh, I, I will add, so, uh, this one is just a, go a goofy one, but um, we go through, uh, I mean, the records obviously are really fun and our, and our, by the way, our uh, voice director, Charlie Adler, look him up. He is, he is incredible. Uh, voiceover royalty and he is fantastic and hilarious and we have a really fun time in records but um when we do sound effects sound effects spotting you know it's go that in itself is just a fun like should the sound be or should it be you know like <laughs> <laughs> that's just a really just that you know i'm i'm constantly saying to you know dana like i can't we really get paid to do this okay that's crazy right? yeah what color awesome. should this not be? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this not is too green. Right. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Madagascar, a little wild.